desktop environments, window managers, and related topics. In this nugget, we're going to look at the standard desktop environments that come with Red Hat Linux and their associated window managers and display managers. We'll look at uh, configuration tools for these, and we'll also learn how to switch between them so you can decide which one you like. Finally, we'll do a little software tour to make sure you're aware of some standard applications that'll help make your time on a Linux system more productive. So let's get started. Well, let's start by talking about some definitions to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, first let's talk about desktop environments. Desktop environment controls the overall look and feel of the interface. Okay, the common desktop environments that are out there are GNOME and KDE. KDE just stands for the K desktop environment. Okay, uh, these are the two window managers that are most, or two desktop environments that are most commonly used with Red Hat. GNOME is the default desktop environment for Red Hat Linux. Okay, and like I said, it controls the overall look and feel of the interface. The start menu, the little taskbar at the bottom of the screen, the icons, things like that are controlled by uh, the desktop environment. But the desktop environment works hand in hand with the window manager to really present, you know, you with a computer that you can use in this graphical way. And the window manager what that's doing is it's controlling the way that X clients are displayed on the screen, the way they're initially positioned, how you move them, how you resize them, uh, things like that. Think back to that last video when we looked at the X window system in sort of a bare bones form. Okay, uh, we, we had first we just had a black screen with an X cursor. Then we opened a window up, and that window though didn't have a title bar. It didn't have uh, the little buttons up in the top right hand corner to minimize the window or to close the window. You couldn't drag the window around and move it around on the screen. Okay, The window manager is what controls all those aspects uh, of the interface that have to do just with that window. Okay, The common window managers that are out there for GNOME, the default window manager these days, is MetaCity. Uh, the old default window manager for GNOME used to be Sawfish. You can still use Sawfish uh, today with GNOME if you wanted to, and I'll show you how to switch from MetaCity over to Sawfish. Uh, for KDE, the default window manager is called KWIN. Okay, so these window managers, uh, you know, there's other ones out there, Ice Window Manager, uh, Window Maker, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. And, you, you know, if you have a reason to switch, if you don't like the one that you're using, or you want to just experiment, look out on the internet, you'll see screenshots and, and people talking about different window managers and why they're so cool. Um, and, you know, you can make that decision again for yourself. And it's more of a qualitative, you know, aesthetic issue, okay, more, more than anything. Okay, so there's some window managers that out, are out there. And like I said, they're working hand in hand with the desktop environment to control the, the look and feel of the system. Finally, there are display managers. Uh, the, and the display manager, what that does is it's really like the initial login screen. When you see that graphical login screen, like type your username and then you hit enter and then it, then it says type your password and then, you know, it goes on and starts up an X window session. Well, really, that thing that you're typing your username and your password into is what's called the display manager. Okay, and we're going to talk more about display managers here in a couple minutes. The two most popular display managers are GDN, which uh, you know is like the GNOME display manager, and KDM, which is the K display manager. And by default, the GNOME display manager will start up a GNOME desktop environment. KDM will start up a K desktop environment. But you can actually change that. You can have the GNOME display manager start up your K desktop environment. They're, they're flexible that way. Okay, and like I said, we'll talk more about the display managers in one second. Let's talk about desktop environments first. Okay, so the first one here, GNOME. What, one thing you have to know about GNOME is you must use a window manager that's GNOME aware. Okay, this is not a technical term, but, but what this means is that the window manager must have been written with knowledge of GNOME's built-in functions. Okay, or otherwise it's not going to work well. Okay, so MetaCity, Sawfish, WindowMaker all fall into that category of GNOME aware. The config files for GNOME, uh, global config files are in slash etsy slash GNOME directory, and the local config files are in your home directory, and the directory is called dot GNOME. Okay, and there's some other directories. Uh, if you just do an ls minus a on your home directory, you'll see all the associated other directories with GNOME, but this is the main one for the configuration files, the user configuration files. Same goes for KDE, okay? Uh, there's a home direct in your home directory, there's a directory called .kde that holds the user config files for the K desktop environment. There's also a graphical user interface config tool for KDE uh, called KControl, and we'll take a look at that when we go out to the Linux screen as well.
Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about display managers now. What is a display manager? Okay, well the first thing is is that a display manager is actually an X client. So when you go and you see that login screen, that graphical login screen, uh, and it says you know type your username, you hit enter, you type your password, and so on. That is an X client that's running. All right, the default display manager for Red Hat is the GDM, the GNOME Display Manager. Okay, you can change that default by looking by changing the shell script Etsy X11 PrefDM, Preferred Display Manager. I guess that's what it stands for. And uh, in there, there's a variable called Preferred, and you change it from GDM to to KDM, for instance, if you wanted to change over to the K the Display Manager. Okay, now when you log in to this display manager, when you use this X client to log in, the display manager starts what's called a session manager. For GNOME, uh, that that program is called GNOME hyphen session. Uh, for KDM, that uh, session manager is uh, KWIN, and they're both in the user bin directory, KWIN and GNOME session. Okay, then once that session manager starts, then all future things like all X clients that are started and stuff are all dealt are all handled by that session manager is what's taking care of that. Okay? One note here, and this might seem kind of out of left field, but if you log in via a display manager, uh, the, the file in your home directory tilde xinitrc is not used. This is a, a, a configuration file for X Windows, okay? But this configuration file is ignored if you log in via a display manager. Now you might say, well, how else am I supposed to log into the system? Well, we know of other ways to log into the system. One of those ways is to log in via a console and then execute the start X command. So here I just want to compare and contrast logging in via display manager and logging in via uh, the console and then typing start X. Okay? If you log in via the console and then type start X, it turns out that X Windows is a child process of the shell. Okay, so so the shell is still running. You've logged in via the console. You've started a shell. Then when you start X Windows this way, though, it's really a child process of the shell. If you log in via Display Manager, like we just said, the Display Manager starts a session manager, and then from there on, the session manager handles all the X clients and so on. Okay, so the 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 X clients that start there are child processes of the session manager. Okay, when you uh, exit X Windows, uh, once if you log in via Display Manager, you're sent back to the Display Manager. So that login screen pops up again, and if you want to start another X Windows session, you have to log in again. But if you came, if you came this route and you logged in via the console, when you exit out of X Windows, you're still logged into the shell. If you wanted to start another X Windows session, all you'd have to do is type Start X. You don't have to log in again. Okay, so that's just a, a little comparison and contrasting of the uh, logging in via Display Manager and logging in via Start X. Certainly nowadays, more common the more common approach is to log in via Display Manager. Back in the day, or on a more uh, you know primitive Linux system, uh, you you would still log in via the console and then execute Start X. And if you do that, then that .xinitrc file in your home directory governs is, is a configuration file for starting X Windows. Okay, it's a configuration file that X Windows will look at when you do it this way. All right, well now let's look, move out to the Linux screen and look at some of this stuff firsthand. All right, well the first thing I want to do here is just show you this display manager. So like I said before, this controls the login process. Um, and what I want to do here is just show you some of the options that you have from the display manager. So one of them is to choose a language. So you can choose a language other than English. I'm just going to skip that part. Um, under system, you can reboot or shut down the computer. I don't want to do either of those. But under session is where you can choose which desktop environment that you uh, go into. So GNOME is my default desktop environment. I'm just going to pick KDE right now. I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to type uh, my username and password. Now it prompts me and it says, you've chosen KDE for this session. Do you wish, wish to make KDE the default for all future sessions? And I don't. I just want to show it to you for demonstration purposes. And when I'm done here, I'll just go back to using GNOME. So I'm going to say no here. And then it's going to start up uh, the K desktop environment. And you can see the messages here. It's loading the window manager, uh, the desktop, the panel. Uh, it's restoring session now. What this means is that when you, when you go to log out of KDE, it's going to ask you a question. Do you want to save this session? And what that means is all the windows and applications that you have open when you go to log out, do you want all those to be reopened the next time you go to log in? Okay, and if you do, then you'll check that box. That's actually it's already checked by default, and then 
all of this stuff, when you log in again, this stuff will open automatically. So the last time that I was in KDE, um, I had a console window open and I went to log out and I said, yes, yeah, save this session. And now the console window opened up automatically when I went into KDE. So this saves you a little bit of time if you open up a bunch of applications or windows or something like that. When you go, uh, you know, when you're doing your work, then the next time you log in, you don't have to reopen all those applications and windows, uh, to, you know, to start up doing stuff. Okay, so here's our uh, X terminal window or our console window, and notice here it's called console with a K. This is like KDE's little shtick that all of their applications start with a K. Okay, now. Uh, in this console window, we can do anything that we want that we're used to doing, you know, any of the commands that we've already learned, whatever, we can type in this console window. It's no different than any other console window. One of the nice things I like about console with a K is that one of the things you can do is click on this little new tab here and you'll get a new console window, but it doesn't take up an extra window. So over here, you know, maybe I could switch over and be the root user. I could go up to the top level directory, do an LS, whatever. So in this window, I could be doing root stuff. Then I can go back and click here, and I go back to that initial console window where I was just Perry. Right? If I want to go back and be the root, I just click on this one. Now I'm back to being the root user, back to being Perry, and so on. And it just saves you some clutter on your desktop. I really like that as a feature of console. Okay, so, so here we are, uh, you know, doing our stuff here. If you look around, though, at the uh, other parts of the desktop, I mean, everything looks basically the same like it did in GNOME. The home directory, start here, the trash can, the red hat uh, start menu here where we can set preferences and use system tools and go to the control center to set up various things like speaker volume or whatever. Uh, the icon for uh, web browsing, for the open office uh, uh, office sweet stuff, all those icons are, are the same. Okay, that's because Red Hat has this underlying theme that it gives to all of its de desktop environments by default, which is called Blue Curve. Okay, and this theme you can change and make things look different between KDE and GNOME, but basically, I mean, everything is kind of the same. They have basically the same functionality. Um, and you can do basically the same stuff in them. They have slight little feature differences. Like I was saying, the console thing in, in KDE is slightly different than the basic terminal window in, uh, in GNOME. Okay, so let's talk about how to configure KDE. And the way that we're going to do that is to use the K console program. So I'm going to put an ampersand on it to run it in the background. Uh, oh, it's not K console. It's called K control. I was just thinking of... Uh, the console window here, but K control is the program that you use to, um, to configure KDE. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we're in the KDE control center, and this is uh, where you can set all these various things. So let's just go into look and feel and see what we can set here. Uh, you can see all these various things we can set. Let's look at icons, and you can see the thing that's set already is that it's the blue curve icon theme. But we can change that, uh, and there's all sorts of other themes. There's themes you can get over the internet if you want something fancy that people have developed. Let's just look at one like the KDE low color theme, for instance. I'm going to uh, click apply, and then let me just minimize this control center to get it out of the way. And now you can see the icons have changed for some of this stuff, okay? And whatever, right? I mean, now instead of a red hat, it's K with a gear. Uh, the start here menu, the home, the trash can all look a little different, okay? But, but it's just totally superficial, right? That's just the theme. The functionality of any of these things hasn't changed. If I click on this K down here, it still gives me the exact same menu that it gave me when it was the red hat. Okay, so, so superficially it looks a little bit different, but ultimately it, it's the same functionality. Okay, so that's K control. Um, the other thing I want to do before we get out of here is I want to show you just this workspace thing. Uh, we have this in GNOME too. I haven't really talked about it too much, but I can go to different workspaces or desktops. So if I click on desktop two here, I go to a different desktop. That terminal window or that console window that I had open is not gone. It's just sitting over here in desktop one. So if I click on one, there's my console window. I go back to two and here's my file manager window. Notice that the file manager in KDE is called Conqueror. Uh, in GNOME it was called Nautilus. Again, basically the same functionality, a little bit different look and feel to it. Okay, And this was open already too. This was part of my session that was saved. It saves the, all the windows you had open on across all your different workspaces. 
Okay, so so there's like a little quick tour of KDE, basically how you configure it. Look around and you know play around with it, and if and and pick whichever desktop environment and window manager and so on that you'd like. Now what I want to do is go over and look at uh, the the GNOME desktop environment and how to configure that. All right, so now we, here we are back at the display manager screen. I logged out of my. Uh, of my KDE session, okay, and now I'm back at the display manager screen. I'm just going to type my username and my password, and now it's going to take me into the GNOME desktop environment because I didn't specially check KDE, and GNOME is my default desktop, okay? So now GNOME's starting up, and just like KDE, you know, again, we see all the, the, the same basic stuff that we saw with KDE, okay? Let me open up a terminal window, and uh, in this terminal window, I'm going to start the GNOME control center okay so now the gnome control center is the uh, you know the tool that you can use to configure gnome it's in my opinion it's not quite as nice as the k control uh, the program but all the same functionality uh, we can set the theme by double clicking on theme here you can see blue curve is chosen but there's other themes that we can pick um, you can go down to menus and toolbars and you can say okay uh, you know the sample toolbars the text is below the icons and in, in here uh, show icons and menus so when I go over here to this menu you can see there's icons up the left side of the screen and that's because this box is checked if I uncheck that box these icons up the side would disappear okay that's the sort of stuff that you can you can mess around with okay and uh, like I said the known control center is basically the same functionality wise as K control but it's just operating for the gnome desktop instead of the KDE desktop okay so now what I want to do you, you know and there's there's just an infinite amount of playing around that you can do if you're interested in customizing your desktop to look a particular way or whatever um, you, you know go out on the internet there's all sorts of themes you can look at people are proud they post that screenshots of their um, of their desktops and how cool they are and the kind kinds of icons they have and the way they have it laid out and stuff and some of them are really cool and, and and check that out and if that appeals to you you know go ahead and download some stuff and set up the uh, and customize your desktop to be you know unique and, and and you know the way that you want it to be okay so uh, that's that's the gnome control center now what I want to do is just show you uh, if you want to switch window managers what you have to do okay so one of the things that one of the ways that you can do this is to Emacs or edit your um, bash profile okay and if you go into bash profile and you set up a variable down here you say export and you say window manager uh, equals qu double quotes and you say like sawfish for instance okay and then I save this file okay now if I uh, type out my um, bash profile you'll see that that line was in there oops there we go and there's the line that's in there so window manager is now sawfish so the next time I go to log in it'll change my window manager to be sawfish okay and then my window manager won't be metacity which is what it is now now why would you want to do this well again this is more of an aesthetic issue or a personal uh, you know personal choice issue there's no real quantitative reason to, to choose one over the other um, I find sawfish actually a little bit clunky uh, compared to um, uh, metacity which is the default for gnome now so I'm not really going to change that I just wanted to show you what you need to do if you wanted to change that okay so uh, you know that's how you change a window manager for a particular desktop environment we learned how to configure the desktop environments now let's just take a little look at some of the software that's out there uh, for the in the various desktop environments for Linux actually before we do that software tour there's just a couple other things I wanted to show you uh, one of them is the uh, switch desk command okay switch desk changes your default desktop so if I say switch desk KDE you can see it says desktop now set up to run KDE so my default desktop is now set to be KDE if I log out of the system and log back in I'll be in the K desktop environment and I won't have to go to the session button on in the display manager and choose KDE and so on it's just my default desktop and similarly I can say uh, switch desk if I want to go back here to gnome so that in case I forget uh, switch desk gnome 
Okay, and now GNOME is my default desktop again. Okay, so this is one way to change your default desktop. Uh, before, when we were playing around with the display manager, you saw another way to do it. If you just pick a particular display manager to log into for this session, you get prompted and say, okay, KDE, you chose KDE for this session. Do you want KDE to be your default for future sessions? And if you said yes there, that would have the exact same effect as saying switch desk KDE. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to show you. Another thing I wanted to show you is just uh, a text-based way to get a lot of these uh, known programs that are out here in various menus and stuff. One of the ways you can see all these different known programs you have available to you is type gnome hyphen and then hit tab twice to see all the different completions for gnome hyphen. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of programs here built into GNOME. Uh, you know, things like a dictionary, the control center, we already saw that one, um, a, a, a calculator, a, a terminal window. If I page down here with the space bar, uh, you'll see the GNOME uh, search tool and uh, the GNOME text editor, GNOME terminal, which is what we're in right here. Okay, so if I do like GNOME search tool, for instance, you get this window that's like an, a, a search tool. It's like a graphical based search tool. In case you're not up on like the find command and on the tip of your tongue and you want to use something graphical to you know to do it and make it a little bit easier on yourself well you can use the gnome search tool well this search tool I'm just gonna close this um, this search tool is also available down here in the menus if you go search for files you get that exact same gnome search tool okay so but sometimes it's just easier to type a command than sort through a bunch of menus or icons or something looking for some particular uh, program that you run often you can just type it in like this okay um, a lot of the configuration things uh, like gnome theme properties okay this thing we got to uh, through the um, uh, through the configuration tools and it's the exact same window we're seeing but it's just for setting the theme okay so if there like I said if there's things that you do all the time programs or configurations or whatever program programs that you run all the time you can run them in a text-based way you don't have to run them through the graphical user interface and that's you know one of the things about Linux right is a lot of the things once you're more experienced you end up doing more things at the command line than you do by clicking on icons and so on and I just wanted to show you that you know all these graphical tools that are built into GNOME are no different you can run all of these from the command line now I just want to tell you a little bit about what these programs are that are down here in your panel. Uh, OpenOffice.org Writer, which is a word processor. Impress, which creates presentations. And Calc, which is a spreadsheet program. Let me just open up the spreadsheet program just to kind of give you an introduction what OpenOffice.org is. OpenOffice.org is a, is a set of, it's an office suite, okay, that is sort of platform independent. Okay, OpenOffice.org runs on uh, Linux machines, Macintosh machines, Windows machines, Solaris machines. Uh, you know, it covers like 99% of all the computers that are out there in the world can run or running on open can run OpenOffice.org. Okay. The other thing about OpenOffice.org is that it mimics the Microsoft Office suite enough so that if you're familiar with that stuff, if you're good at Excel or good at you know Microsoft Word or something, then you can transition to these products pretty much seamlessly. I was you know I'm a mildly good Excel user. I you know when I was a professor or something, I had to set up spreadsheets for grades. I've set up spreadsheets for some scientific experiments and stuff like that. Okay. And I, when I first opened open this program up, it was a seamless transition. I didn't have to look at any help files or manuals or anything like that. I just set it up and used it and boom, it was done. Okay. And uh, the other thing about OpenOffice.org is it's capable of reading the Microsoft Office stuff. So you can take a Word document, bring it into micro to OpenOffice.org Writer and there it is. Okay. And then you can read other people's Word documents and you don't have to be running Microsoft Word, which obviously is not running on Linux. Okay. So OpenOffice.org, like I said, is running on Windows. It's running on Macintoshes and Linux machines. And so if you're using, if everyone's using that, the, the, the ability to share files is nice. So that's nice in an office situation where people are using different platforms. When I was a professor, a lot of people were using Windows machines. Some were using Macintoshes. I was using uh, Unix and Linux. And it was hard for us to share files. They'd send me a Word document and I couldn't open it. I had to, you know, save it or email it to some account and then open it up from my Windows machine, which was usually turned off and so on. And, and, you know, so it was just a pain to do that kind of stuff. If I had this available to me, openoffice.org at the time, it would have made that um, 
communication between people that were using different platforms a lot easier. Okay, and I would advocate this for any office that is uh, doing some sort of you know cross-platform. Uh, that has some sort of cross-platform situation. If people are using different uh, operating systems, if they all agreed on this as, as the base, then there's never going to be an issue in sharing files and stuff. And from the reviews that I've read of openoffice.org, it seems like it's it's pretty seamless. Like people have said, you there's a, there's a for, in the writer one, for instance, you can go ahead and just convert all, a whole bunch of, you know, Microsoft Word documents over to openoffice.org documents. Okay, and p the reviews that I've read have said those things have gone on flawlessly, all right? And so, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's an advantage to openoffice.org that it's trying to break into that market that's basically impenetrable, but that Microsoft has built up. Um, but it's a way for the Linux community to reach out and say, look, like we're trying to be compatible with you and we're trying to work with that s situation, okay? Enough of the preaching. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how this stuff works. I'm not going to go through and, and show you um, what each of these things actually, how they, how they work, but like I said, if you're familiar with the Microsoft products, it should be second nature. And even if you're not familiar with them, a little bit of the help, uh, the help file here will get you started in no time. All right, well, it's time to wrap up our nugget on desktop environments and window managers. Uh, in this nugget, the first thing we talked about was what is a desktop environment, what's a window manager, what's a display manager. And then we got into looking at the various desktop environments, and we looked at the two most popular ones for Red Hat, which are GNOME and KDE. And remember, GNOME is the uh, GNU object model environment, and KDE is the K desktop environment. GNOME is the default window manager for Red Hat, and but you can use KDE if you want. Remember Remember though that there's a lot of uh, other like system graphical tools to do like system administration and stuff that are that are dependent on uh, that are written for the GNOME desktop environment. And while you can do all of those various tasks, uh, you know, just from the console, so you can use KDE or you can just do it via a console window. You don't even need a graphical environment. Um, sometimes uh, some of those tool, the graphical tools, make things easier. And so uh, you know, keep that in mind if you're uh, choosing a desktop environment. If, if you like to use a lot of those system administration tools, uh, some of which you haven't seen yet and I'll be showing you in future videos, then keep, you know, keep GNOME around or keep using GNOME. Uh, remember the window managers? We looked at, uh, you know, just MetaCity is the default window manager for GNOME. Uh, KWIN is the default window manager for KDE. Um, I showed you how to switch your window manager using uh, the window manager environment variable, setting that in your bash profile, and we set that to Sawfish so that you could use the Sawfish window manager if you chose, uh, using something like that command I gave you. Uh, that we looked at display managers, sort of how they work, what they govern, how to change uh, which desktop environment you go into from the display manager and so on. Well, I hope you found this nugget informative and thanks for watching.